Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today that little um, Sony um, IP, IPF I think it is it, or ICPF um, 8 Pro 80, that little um, late 1980s, early 90s um, all wave radio and I've got that in the box here and we have um, some replacement capacitors that have come. This is what we've been uh, this is what we have been waiting for. Let's get in here. Okay. Right, let's see what we've got. Two lots of passages in here. So they put them both in the same oh they put them both in the same um, thing. That really annoys me because they charge me twice for postage. Um, but yeah, we have got some, and these were really, really, really hard to get. Um, there's not many places you can get these from now. Uh, but I managed to get the right size in the um, 20 U, 22 UF at um, 6 volts. Got the with the exactly the right. Um, spacing for the board and I managed to get the um, 47 at 6.3 as well so uh, let's crack on and uh, see what we can do with this thing and I've also got these are the capacitors that I already have and we should have every other value that we need for this radio um, in this packet anyway okay let's make a start now we'll get the uh, We'll get the radio chassis back out very 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 carefully there we go we can get this out of the way because we don't need anything in there for now we just want to keep that keep that safe that's why i've boxed it up like that right now i think we're going to have to do this basically in two sections and in fact we might depending on how long um, each section takes it might even be two separate um, two separate videos because basically this this top board here is uh, what does all the work this is like the actual rate the digital part of the radio itself um, even though this is an analog radio it is like basically all digital tuning is a very very sophisticated radio but what I think we will concentrate on first is this bottom board uh, basically this bottom board is the um, amplifier uh, this has got the power amplifier section on it and this is what we definitely know that this is faulty uh, we are not getting any audio output from the radio even though the radio appears to be like tuning frequencies it tunes up it tunes down most of the buttons I've tried seem to do something uh, like I said, there is virtually no audio coming out of it, and from the, if you watch the previous video on this, we know that we definitely have leaking capacitors on this board. So I think the first thing we should really do is um, look at what we can actually do with this board. Um, what I am just looking at now is how much actual disassembly um, I want to do on this thing. I'm wondering, am I do I actually want to take this board actually? disassemble it further or try and work as the board is here I'm, I'm kind of thinking towards it had been really really nice if I could um, possibly take that board out to work on it I'd certainly um, have less risk of actually doing any damage to uh, like you know these interconnecting wires or anything and there's some fairly uh, some fairly fragile stuff here um, I'm hoping at least one side of these actually disconnects and they're not just permanently soldered together um, interconnects. What I think I will have to do now I can replace them when I um, when I reassemble the radio but I think what I'm going to have to do is take these um, cable ties off and that bit of tape that's there I'll try and 
try and get that. Okay. We'll lift that out of the way like that. And hopefully these can disconnect from here. Excellent. Right, so that's another part we've actually got disconnected so we don't have to worry about it. Now what else can we hopefully disconnect? Was that this unplug? See unfortunately some of these wires appear even even though they look like a connector, they're not. It is just a wire that's soldered between the two points, it, which does make it quite, quite tricky to work on. I have a horrible feeling these are the same, and it's not actually a, um, a pull-off connector. They are literally just interconnects between the two boards with actually like a made-up plug, which is then soldered into place, which makes working on this thing... Um, not the nicest, not the easiest. So like if I want to get in to replace that capacitor there. I'm worrying about all the wiring round it. And we can't just unplug that from there because it doesn't actually unplug same that side. Like I said, those are I'd have to desolder one side of it. Um we may even have to go that far with it. This is not a nice radio to work on. In fact, it's not a nice anything to work on. It's pretty horrible. Obviously, they've had to do this to get so all this electronics. I mean, this, like I said, this is 1980s, early 1990s tech. They've had to cram a hell of a lot of in, in here to actually get this to work. Uh, it's it's a bit like you're working on um, an early cell phone and it, in the way it's like literally constructed with different layers built up with boards and interconnects around them like this right um, I wonder if I should try and get that board out to work on It'd still be connected. Um, it'll be still be connected to this board via that and that. But um, I think it would at least allow me to um, get around the board a little bit easier with not having to lug all this metal work with it. So let's have a look at doing that first. We'll free that off. Like there's, and even that doesn't disconnect. There's a little board here. This little switchboard. I believe it's a switchboard. Get that. Get that off. And again, it doesn't look like it disconnects. It's. So how do we get that out of there? Is that part of that? Or is, Ah, so that switch is screwed down there. Right. Let me get my tiny little set of screwdrivers. This is actually the power switch, I believe. to do. Unscrew these screws at the back here and here. Those two screws. 
get this so you can see what I'm talking about. There's a screw there and there's a screw there. I think we need to take them two out, take that screw out there, and then I think we can slide that board out that way and that will release the switch, which is over there. Working on one of these radios is something I would definitely not um, recommend for a beginner. Uh, these things are complicated. They are very, very fiddly and it would be very easy to damage. Right, okay. Now hopefully we can withdraw this board. I'm not going to get to hold it with that, let's try fingers. There we are. Unfortunately it has a ribbon cable connected to it which I was not expecting but at least we should be able to disconnect that easy enough. Or do we have, do we have to take this off before we can even take that off? What we might have to do take this board off here we really are going to the point where we have to completely dismantle this thing just to be able to get that board out but the reason I want to do that is one slip of the um, soldering iron and we can do um, some nasty damage to something that we otherwise won't want to touch so by actually stripping it down further we can um, eliminate some of that danger the only issue being that we have to then put all this back together. should be able to see where that connects it connects down there so unfortunately taking that panel off has done absolutely nothing for us so we'll clip that back in place and I'll put the screws back in after it's back in there Right, so that didn't help. Right, that's up now. So I think what we need to do is we'll get that over there. Uh -huh. <coughs> there we go. Got it. Right. What that has just shown me is you can't actually disconnect. That is really, really, really shoddy. I do not like that at all. Um, 
just bear with me a second folks while I get this back out and then we'll be right back. Okay, well, I managed to get it all apart. Uh, that was an absolute faff to do. So what I thought we'll do is we'll make a start on this board round here. Like I said, this is the uh, power amplifier board. Um, there's some various other things on here, but that's the main focus of this board. Um, as we've already checked that basically all the capacitors on here are pretty much bad. All the surface mount electrolytics anyway. So we've got the new ones, we've got the new ones here. Um, there's nothing really to do apart from just crack on and um, do it. Now, you've got a couple of options really for removing these um, capacitors. The one thing I'm not going to be doing is taking some pliers, getting hold of the capacitor like that and twisting it off the board. Um, you just risk damaging the board far too much from that. What we're going to try to do is walk them off with um, basically just heating one side up with a soldering iron, lifting that side, moving over to the other, lifting that side and slowly walking it off the board that way. Um, I don't really want to use um, any hot air. There's far, far too many things like these chokes, these coils, stuff like that that could, these trim pots that we could, this crystal, any, things like that that we could damage if we just used hot air. I mean, we could tape everything up, but it's so tight and so close, I'd be worried about actually doing some damage uh, with hot air. So we're going to have to do this the old fashioned way. Soldering iron, some solder, some good flux, and um, get it off that way, basically. Um, I'll grab my cleaner there, and I'll realize that I've left actually left my flux in my soldering drawer but it shows me and getting uh, prepared for doing videos don't it right there's my flux okay, I've already got my um, q-tips and um, other what's just off shot at the side of me here so first things first we will add a touch of um, fresh flux this will just help the old solder um, flow a tiny little bit Don't need very much, it's a tiny little bit. Grab some solder to tin my iron up. Just put a little bit of fresh um, solder, not solder on my iron. And basically the idea is just go in heat up that side of the um, capacitor to see if you can get the capacitor to lift now one problem is sometimes when the um, the electrolytes as bad as this um, it's affected the solder and the solder doesn't want to lift right away that absolutely stinks slowly come in that one there we go sometimes you can just lift it with the iron this is a particularly smelly one if only YouTube had smell -a vision you'd know what I meant starting to come that but I'll just try getting in with my finger there we go that's that side up we'll go around onto the other side and we'll get the other side up and then we can hopefully get that stinking capacitor off there and I'm really lucky I might be able to just get in with the iron like this this is when you have the advantage of having a nice fine tip on your iron very nearly off 
We've basically got it lifted up both sides. Uh, it's just being held by a little bit of solder now. So that side's up. Go back in on this side. There we go. That come up there. And that's the capacitor off. Ugh. And that stinks. Ugh. There is the old um, capacitor. And we've managed to get that off by we're doing zero damage to the actual board. I'll just quickly just tidy them two uh, pads up like that. And what we'll do before we go any further, we'll get a bit of IPA. Clean up around there. Get any leaked electrolyte we can off the board, basically. In fact, it'd be really nice if I had an ultrasonic cleaner because it could go in that. But uh, I do, but it's not big enough to take uh, take something of this size, unfortunately. And you would have to do a lot more um, disassembly as well. Okay. So that's basically the first one off the board. Let me see if I can get you down a little bit. So you can actually see properly what I've just... Uh, Okay, let's see if I can get this um, so you can actually see it all right. So if we look, we look at that pad there and that pad there. That's what we've just removed the um, old capacitor from. And then we've cleaned all the all around here. Had a good inspect round, and fortunately, actually, there's no damage. Uh, I think we've caught that one really, really quickly. So that's not looking bad at all. So what I will do, I will um, fish out a replacement capacitor, and we will um, get a new capacitor on there. So uh, back in a sec. Right, I've got you move round, so hopefully you can possibly see a little bit more of what's actually um, going on. Now I've got the new um, capacitors here. Um, like I said, these are as close as I could possibly get to the, that's the original there. And those are the um, replacements. So they're, I think they're a different make, but um, the 6.3 volts rather than 6 volts, but 47 UF. And the sizing, which is the important thing, is exactly the same. I'll get one of these out of the, um, out of the packet. is tricky because my tweezers won't get hold of it very well and it keeps jumping back in uh, I need some better tweezers than these ones really right, like get, get you out come on out you come there we go okay and that there is the replacement the replacement capacitor there so let's get that scrappy old one out of the way And essentially, it's going right there. Um, if you can see that little white dot on the board there, that's what's actually marking the negative on the capacitor, which lines up to the um, little black line there on the capacitor. On the capacitor, so basically, it has got to go in the way that I've got it um, orientated there. So what we'll do, we'll add. A tiny little bit of uh, fresh, fresh 
fresh flux just to the pads. You saw I already tinned those um, pads up. And then basically what we will do, we will get the uh, soldering iron. I'll get my soldering iron ready as well. So nice clean end on it. Tiny bit of fresh solder on it. There we go. That's lovely. Take the new capacitor, get that in position, and we can just go down, solder that side. Oops, missed. Oops. Let's get hold of this capacitor again. That's better. So we will go in. That's that side soldered down. In fact, we'll just have to move it across a little bit because we can't quite get to that pad on that side yet. So we'll heat that pad back up and we will. Yeah, we're going to have to go over a little bit. We'll lift that back off. Hmm. I mean, the spacing should be exactly right, so it should go on. It doesn't help that we've got that that metal work there which means it's very very difficult to actually get the um, the soldering iron down where we need to get it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tiny bit of solder to the actual pad of the uh, pad of the capacitor and then we will go back in this is probably going to be about the trickiest one by the oh I don't know there's one over there that's going to look like it's going to be an absolute mare as well Try doing that again. Okay, I think we've got third time's the charm. Yeah, got it this time. So all we need to do now is we'll just hold the capacity down and we will solder this side. There we go. Then we can just go in with a little bit of extra solder and just make sure that's absolutely perfect down there. There we go, that's that side done. And that's that side done, lovely. And that now is nice and secure. That was a tricky one, if you look there now, that capacitor is nice and solid. We've got a sort of decent solder bridge on that, a decent little solder blob on that side, and again, a decent little solder blob. On that side so that's the first one done I only have let's see now one two three four five six more on that board to go so let's do one more quickly now And then I might um, skip a few and I'll just come back if there's anything like major. I'll come over this way. Right, where are you? right there. I think we're going to do these ones here next. Um, oops, let me get you on shot again. 
Right, there we go. That's better. You can see see it now. So I think we're going to do these two next. That one there is going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, I'll probably have to take that capacitor off there. I might even ha end up having to take that connector off there just to give us enough room. Uh, yeah, I am going to have to, unfortunately. I'll have to... Um, get the old desoldering station warmed up and I'll have to uh, pull that connector off there or else I'm going to melt the connector changing that capacitor um, I really didn't want to have to disconnect all these um, interconnects but I think it's actually probably going to make life easier if I at least take some of these off um, definitely that one there is going to have to come off to be able to change that without damaging that connector there um, do you know what? It would make life easier for that one, wouldn't it, if I took uh, for changing that capacitor there, if I actually took that off first. Uh, that one would get away with, but what's the point of um, struggling if we've got to take that off to be able to do that one? We need to, we're going to take that capacitor off there as well anyway. Um, it's probably fine, but that one's leaked rather badly all the way over its legs. And it will mean we're not handling the... Um, the board quite as much I suppose it might make la yeah um, I'm going to bite the bullet I really 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 didn't want to have to do this to be fair um, but I'm going to bite the bullet I'm going to take those two off there I may as well while I'm doing it desolder that there's, yeah because there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff around there that would be a pain and it's does not as necessary um, those two are going to be fair, those, can you see what I'm pointing at here? There we go. Those two there are going to be fairly easy to take off and they'll mean that we can get to all them um, capacitors without any problems. Uh, that one is going to be a bit more of a mare to get off. Um, we'll probably leave that one in situ but we're definitely going to take that one off and take that one off. So. Uh, I'm not going to bore with you just getting the desoldering station out just to whip them off. So I'll get those whipped off and we'll come right back and we can have a look at taking, um, doing those other few capacitors. So uh, back in a sec. Right, as you can see, I managed to get those um, connectors off. And that even that wasn't as easy as you first expect because these are quite fancy connectors. If you just look as the connectors made, it's like a sprung terminal. So it's actually like a push fit in the board um, before you even add solder to it it's like a really good mechanical connection first uh, which makes desoldering them an absolute mare um, it took quite a while with the uh, desoldering station even got a, I've got an electrical desoldering pump to actually get all the solder cleared off so I could get these free without actually risking breaking them because obviously these are going to have to go back on uh, when we finish the repair so I'll get that out of the way now at least that <coughs> that does give us access to these five capacitors here because we will check out those um, standard through holes as well uh, but our issue and I could smell it even when I was taking that connector off there the stench was unbearable there is a lot of capacitor leakage on this part of the board so um, we'll pretty much do like we've done before um, now we've got that's a uh, 47 at 16 and then we've got another 47 at 6 here. Let's get that 47 at 6 off first. So we'll add a little bit of fresh, very stinky solder to that side. That really does stink. And we'll do the same, just add... Add a little bit here. And we'll just see if we can walk this um, walk this capacitor up and off. So that side's up already. Fortunately we've got a little bit more room. Now we've took those parts off, we've got a little bit more room around this one than we did on the um, previous one. So it should be a little bit easier to um, actually get off. As you can see that's come up there. I think that might be, yeah this one's going to be at least a little bit easier I think, lift that side up, that's up, that 
both sides up completely. We should just be able to lift it off now. Okay, there we go, that's off. Just quickly, just touch them. Uh, the reason I, I like to just touch the uh, pads in is I don't want to leave any little spiky bits up. That when I um, come on with a cotton bud, I could risk catching and tearing the pad. I might actually just nip over that with a little bit of um, desolder braid before we go any further. Oh, let's just do it quick. Because there's like a little hook on that side, if you can see it. What we don't want to do is try and clean the pad up. Catch that with that and actually rip a pad or anything like that. But what we will do, actually, thinking about it, we will whip off the rest of these capacitors and then we can uh, basically use some desolder wick. Clean that whole area up, go in with some IPA and a cotton bud and get all that nice and um, nice and clean. So we'll pull this uh, 47 at 16 off next. So again, we want to go in, we'll add a little bit of fresh, little bit of fresh solder if we can get it to stick. I have a feeling this is the one that most of the electrolytes leaked from because it's not wanting to take any solder at all, that side. This I will just uh, say as well, this is also much trickier to do um, on camera than it is if I was working um, working without the camera on. For one thing, I could have some cheerful tunes playing, which I can't do to um, YouTube. And they're copyright police and um, I'm not actually having to be aware that I've got the you know, I'm trying to film as well as actually work on the board I'd be turning the board around more um, I wouldn't be worried about trying to obscure shots and things like that so it does make it a little bit more tricky to do like I said on camera than it would if I was actually working off camera so what I might do actually is I'll get this capacitor off now um, I might do, in fact what I might do is I might do this area here and I might do the rest of the board off camera and then we can come back uh, when we're working on the uh, on the next one. I think we might have got the solder just to take to that outside now. Yeah, we've got a bit of fresh solder on there. I might be able to get it to walk up this time. Just get hold of it and just wind that side up. That capacitor is not wanting to come off the board. This one is going to be tricky. It's coming up a little bit now on that side. There we go. That side's come up. Go back on this side. I mean, obviously, we do lift a pad. It's not the end of the world. We can fix it. Uh, obviously, I would rather not lift a pad if I can help it. There we go. That side's up. Ugh. And the stench. I'm going to have to go out of the room in a bit and just let the... Uh, let the uh, smell clear. It is very, very, very unpleasant. In fact, I could really do with some extract in this workshop because it is very, very bad when I'm working on things like this with these old leaking electrolytics. Get in there one last time and that's up. There we go, and that's off. And we haven't lifted a pad. No, the pads are good. Pad there is uh, slightly corroded, but it's still in good um, good order. It's not lifted up or anything. And we will get that through hole capacitor off it off there while we're here anyway, because uh, even if it's all right, it's going to need a lot of cleaning round it, and it'll make life a lot easier um, with it out of the way. We should just be able to lift it up and just slip it out.
sides up, sides up. Sides out, that side's out. Right, there we go. You didn't see any of that because my hand was in the way, wasn't it? But basically we've lifted that, uh, what is it, it's a 470 at um, 10 volts. That capacitor, that capacitor is actually probably absolutely fine. There's probably nothing wrong with, um, you can't see it there, that um, capacitor there. There's probably absolutely, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, what make have we got? It's a Rubicon. Um, I'll will test that and to be honest if there's nothing wrong with that I'll probably put it back but it just makes life a lot easier for basically tidying up and for sorting this this part try and get this so you can see that's it trying to think which orientation to push the board in so it's actually somewhat centered on the camera so Basically, we've got a pad there, a pad there, a pad there, a pad there, and then the two through holes there, which we've just taken that capacitor out from. So I'll get a little bit of solder braid. We'll have a little bit of a clean up with some solder braid, and then we can go in um, with some IPA and we can clean off the um, electrolyte from them leaking capacitors. So where is my solder braid? Well, a feeling I'm going to have to order some more because I'm getting very, very low on the um, solder braid. I'll add some nice flux to my solder braid because it makes life easier, it makes it suck up better. Now, this isn't the best iron um, tip I've got on the iron for doing this, but it should work basically go in and we'll just want to wick away any of the old this old solder there we go and we're doing this at the moment more for the fact that because uh, I want to clean this whole air this hair is actually seems to be a bit more contaminated than um, that previous one we just did just judging by the amount of smell I'm getting off it anyway. There we go, we've just got basically the worst of the uh, the excess solder off there. And then we can go in with um, a bit of IPA, clean it all down and then we can clean, basically get rid of any uh, residue from the old electro electrolyte. Okay, right there we go, so that area is pretty clean now, in fact one trick you can do once you've cleaned the area like that is do the smell test again, so let's get our, our soldering iron and what we do is we just run the soldering iron over the board like this. and have a smell and if you can still smell that strong fishy smell you've not got rid of all the leaked electrolyte that was on the board but if you can basically do that like that warm the board up smell and you don't get any of that horrible fishy smell you're basically pretty sure that you've cleaned all the contaminant off the board and it will come off on q-tips and you know it, it does look icky you, know, you can tell you're actually cleaning some muck and rubbish uh, actually off the board. Right, what I'm going to do, actually it's a little bit little bit uncomfortable in here with the um, smell at the moment. Um, so what I will do is I will go and have a brew and um, give it 15 minutes or so. Um, let the um, smell perhaps just go off a little bit and then we'll come back 
we will um, test we'll test that capacitor uh, make sure it's okay if it's okay it can go back on the board um, there's no I can't see anything uh, there's a, if you look at the actual seal on the end there it looks perfect I haven't got any suspicion that this has been leaking so like I said if it's still good for ESR if it's still um, close to spec it can go back in and obviously we'll put a new um, capacitor there and there surface mount and that's that part of the board done we've then got that one to do we've already done the one over there and we've just got the three I think over in that part of the board to do and then basically this I think this amplifier section is pretty much done so uh, back in a sec Right, we're back, and believe me not, it's actually the following day. Um, after I took them out, I went and uh, made a brew, and I started with such a bad headache. Um, I don't know if it was the fumes from them capacitors or what, but um, I had to literally give up and have a um, have a rest for the rest of the evening. So anyway, we're back on it now. And what I thought we'll do is we're actually going to take off um, that capacitor there and that capacitor. Um, <coughs> because I want to even clean this board up around here even more. Um, I just quickly before I started filming then, um, the holes for that through hole capacitor there were blocked. So I got the um, soldering iron and um, my um, manual desoldering pump there just to de-unblock those. And I could still smell that horrible fishy smell. So I'm going to get those off and I'm going to basically just douse this whole area with some more IPA um, and have a really good clean round there to see if I can get any more of that um, electrolyte that's leaked all over the board off. So what we will start with is we will um, carry on as we were before. And we'll pop that, um, we'll pop that one off there. In fact what I might try and do. I can see this is really, really corroded, the, um, the leg on this side here. So let's see if we can add a little bit of new... Ugh. This is going to be tricky because that won't even take solder. Try holding it and we'll go in and just see if, again if we can walk it off the board like we did the other ones. and get some more solder in there again. This is probably the worst amount of leakage I've found on the board so far. Um, no, it's just, ah, there we go. I think it might have just got it to take a little bit of fresh solder there. Basically what happens is the fresh solder will um, wick into the old solder and basically help help it to flow again because uh, it tends to like go like crystal like a crystalline form form of when uh, starting to go on that side when it's affected by the um, electrolyte I'm wondering whether I pop that off um, next it'll give us a little bit more room that side of that capacitor there to be able to get it out without causing any um, any damage so let's see if we can walk that um, through hole one off the board hopefully you can see you can't really see what I'm doing let me get you zoomed out a little bit another thing is my um, my separate little LCD monitor that I usually watch for, um, so I can see what the cat what I'm what I actually got on camera has just died uh, well, I don't know whether it's actually the um, monitors that died, the cable or the output from the camera, because that cam this camera I'm filming on is it's not happy. It's um, it is on its last legs, unfortunately. So the power supply went pop on it. So I uh, I use another supply to power it, right voltage and everything. But um, then the battery has failed on it now. Um, it won't charge at all and um, the auto the um, zoom on it is um, playing up if you perhaps noticed on some of the videos it will randomly start zooming in of its own uh, that is really badly contaminated 
it starts zooming in of its own accord. We're going to have some fun getting that off because the um, electrolyte is really badly contaminated around there. I think we might have to resort to the uh, the proper desolder station. We'll switch that on and get that warming up. Usually if you tap it, it stops making that horrible noise, but I will have to do In fact, um, I apologise, because I'll pause the video while I whip this off so you don't have to um, put up with that horrible noise that my desoldering station's currently started to make. Right, well, the uh, proper um, desoldering equipment made very light work of that. I'll switch that off and put that away. But uh, that whipped it straight off. You can just take that capacitor out now. That capacitor itself is prob probably absolutely fine. What have we got? 220 UF at um, 10 volts. I don't think it's quite... I can't see a make on it, which is unusual. I'd expect it. SU, that's the only thing it says on it. The other one I think we said was a Rubicon. Yeah, the other one's a Rubicon, which I, I actually did test on my ESR tester, and it's absolutely 100% fine. Right, that gives us a little bit more room, so we can try and get to um, get that damn electrolytic there off. So, let's see if we can get in there. Get in with a little bit of fresh solder. See if we can. Uh, Oh, the smell, yuck, it's as bad as it was uh, last night. Get in there, and again, we'll just see if we can walk that side up. Hold it up like that. We've got that side up a little bit. I have to also bear in mind that I've got a ribbon cable here that I've got to be incredibly careful of uh, while I'm actually working on this because there's no way of disconnecting it um, without desoldering it, which I really don't want to do. This side's being rather awkward. Now I've just managed to solder that side back down again, which is uh, slightly annoying. Come on, off you come. trick is not to rush it basically. Right, we're up on that side there. That side's basically off. So we're only held on on that one side, which is being a pain. Well, in fact, it's just broken free now. Let's hope we haven't broken a, um, a pad off though. Let's lift that away. That's why it was being such a problem. If you look at the, uh, I can get you zoomed in. Right, there we go. If we look, what have I got to point with? I'll have to point with these. But basically, if you look down there, if you can see, um, basically that pad is still stuck and it's all corrosion around it. We can clean that off with a bit of um, solder wick, I'm hoping. Let's, uh, we'll cut ourselves a piece of solder wick. will do is go in with some fresh solder and we'll just put some fresh solder on there first we'll 
if we can. Just to help. Oh, the smell. Yuck. There we go. We've got some solder on there. We'll just try and whip that all back up now. And we can get, hopefully, them pads fairly clean. Tin it all up. Well, we'll clean it then with the um, IPA and some cotton buds. In fact, let me add a little bit of um, flux to that, just to help. I'll put some flux on my uh, solder braid. In fact, I can put a little bit of fresh flux on the board there. And this will just help. Seeing it is so contaminated, um, it will just help us get it up. There we go, that's starting to work. Yeah. Yeah, this is a nasty one. And just use that to soak the worst of it up. There we go. Just while we're in here, we can clean that up. What we'll the sort that out after but that's not a problem right let's give it a clean up with um, some IPA and some cotton buds and we can get all that burnt electrolyte off there right where's my cotton buds gone right, my cotton buds my q-tips that's what I meant to say right oh that's coming up nice yeah That's not too bad. Have a bit of a clean up round here as well because we still had uh, that residue smell on this side of the board as well. I think we might have just got away with that. I think if this had been left then many months or years longer we may have actually had an issue there um, I think we just caught it in time I will have to get a mag some magnification down there though and have a proper uh, a proper look in fact let me see if I can get you zoomed in so you can see what I'm actually going on about that's about as good as we can get it now let's get on to exactly where there we go can you see um, like the exposed bit of copper there where literally the electrolyte has lifted the um, solder mask no I don't think it's done any um, damage continuity wise by the look of it I think we've just got it in time in fact we can sell, tell those two ground pins there are connected together so if we get the test meter and just make sure we've got continuity between those two pins we should be um, we should be good let me get my uh, my very fine probes out. We'll get a continuity buzzer out. There we go. That will do. And we'll just check continuity in there before we uh, we progress. We want to check between uh, that point, which is a ground, and that point, which is a ground, and we're okay. And let's just check. Yeah, so um, <coughs> we've got really lucky. We managed to get to it before any like permanent damage has occurred. So we have seen that you know, on computer boards and what have you. We've worked on before where it's literally eaten. Um, eaten tracks and traces away we've just got a little bit of um, solder mass been lost there that's not an issue at all so um, let us put some uh, new capacitors back on this board uh, what we will have to do we'll have to tin up those um, tin up those traces slightly in fact let's just do a quick smell test first I'll clean my iron off and we'll just run it over the board and just have a quick
that smells better. We'll do the same on this side. Now I did. Yeah, that smells a lot better. So I think we um, can safely say we've pretty much cleared any of the um, electrolyte around this area away. So we will tin up those pads in there, in there again. So it'll just make um, adding the new components a little bit easier. There's some fresh solder already on the pads. There we go. We can do this side as well while we're in here. There we go. Now we have got a um, 47 UF at 6 volts to go in there. Uh, we've got a 47 UF at 16 volts to go in there. And then we've got a 47 UF at 6 volts to go in there. Make sure that's right. There's the three capacitors that we took off. That is, yeah, 47 at 6, 47 at 16, and another 47 at 16. I've got the old capacitors there just to double check. Right, let's get the uh, Let's do that one up there first. Let me get you zoomed out a little bit, actually. There we go. So we'll take another new capacitor out of here. This is a 47 at 6.3. We need two of them. What I'm going to do, which I didn't do before, is I'm just going to put a, basically very slightly tin um, the legs of that before I actually try and install them. So I think that might like make life just a tiny bit easier with um, that's it, a little bit on there. Oops, a little bit on there. Sometimes with um, tiny components like this, you do have to be careful of um, surface tension like that because they will tend to want to stick to the solder and flick away. A little bit on there. a little bit on there quick swell up at slope of my coffee and right now from doing that other one we um, as we remember um, the dot there indicates the um, negative rail so we'll get the capacitor and we'll get that in the right orientation we can pick it up so that little monolithic I see there does make um, doing this a little bit tricky, but um, we will manage it. Okay, that side's down. Now I'm going to just have to spin this round so I can actually see what I'm doing, but I will try and keep this on in shot if I can. If I possibly can. Right, okay. So, can you still see what we're doing here? I don't know. There we go. So we'll go in and we'll solder that side down. There we go. I'll just add a tiny touch more solder there. I'm a little bit skew on that. I'm going to have to just remelt the other side in a second. We'll just get in there. Like that, and we'll go back and we will um, just straighten that capacitor up because I have got it a little bit, a little bit on the uh, on the crock. We'll just remelt that there, just pull it over there. That's much better. 
then we'll spin that around so I can see the other side again. And we can just make sure that's nice and straight that side as well. And there we go, perfect. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that one now. Yeah, put my iron down. So that's, oops, where can you see? There we go. There we go, so that's um, that one's replaced. So we need to do, in fact, let's spin this board round again. It is really tricky to do this without having my, um, have my monitor. The good news is I do actually have a um, a new camera on the way. Um, when I say a new camera, it isn't exactly brand new. It is a second-hand one, but it is um, a slight upgrade from what I'm using at the moment. It's got a high, you know, it's um, a higher def camera. Uh, it's a little bit newer. It's not a make I've ever um, I've ever used before, but we'll. Uh, well, give it a go. It was um, a re it was reasonably priced, right? I can't find ah there they are. I want a forty-seven at sixteen, don't I? So I have to go into my my stocks. Let's see what we've got in there. That's um, that's too big. That's a hundred. What are those? Forty-seven at sixteen volts. There we go. I do keep um, a small stock of um, surface mount capacitors in. I don't use them that often, but obviously, if you like I'm doing an Amiga 600 or an Amiga 1200 or um, you know, a classic Mac or something like that, or perhaps working on a laptop or something, you know, I do need them. So I do keep a small stock in. I just had to order in them um, other Stranger values. Right. We'll get one of these out. Turn that up like I did on the other one. There we go. That's perhaps a little bit too much. Take some of that off. Right. This is the 47 at um, 16 volts. You can see the tab is that way, the sort of the white splodge is that way, so the capacitor wants to go on the board in that orientation. Oops. And ideally, you don't want to um, ping it across your workbench. So let's try that again. And we'll pick it up. And it's in this position here we want it. Let's, let's try heating that up and just basically sliding the component. Did we get that? Nope. I try doing it with my fingers rather than the um, tweezers. Actually, in this, in, in that instance, that was easier to do with my fingers um, than it was with the tweezers. Let's see. Let's warm that side up there. Push that down. There. Almost a little bit high on that side. There we go. See that sit down then. So that's that one changed. Then we've got the. Uh, now where did I put it? I got that out ready, didn't I? And I tinned it up ready. Is that it? Yeah, because that's not the one that I've just taken off. That's the new one. No, I'll just, uh, just touch the legs up on that because they've got a little bit too much of a peak on them. There we go. And this one goes in the other 
orientation so it goes that way around. So again, let me try doing it with my fingers rather than the um, the tweezers. Okay, that side's gone. Has it? That's gone in. Again, if I, if I could do with that being over this way a little bit, we'll just try that now. No, I still need it a bit further this way. They're not as generous on the uh, pad size on this one. That's down there. Can I get to the pad this time? Yeah, just. There we go. And that's in. Let's just have a quick check around that and make sure that we're happy. Yeah, that's okay. We can put this, um, this capacitor back. So I'm perfectly happy with that um, capacity, like I said, I've tested it on the SR meter and it was absolutely fine. So that can go back in the board. And to be honest, people, you know, capacitors of this age, the through hole ones, aren't as especially like Rubicon, good quality ones, aren't as problematic as people make out. You don't generally have to change these um, on spec like you do with a lot of other um, capacitors. That said, um, I have noticed some used in like early 1980s um, like computer monitors and stuff are starting to um, fail now. And it doesn't matter whether it's a uh, you know a Rubicon, a um, Nishicon, you know they, they are just starting to fail, but that's quite um, more of a high demand application of the capacitor than um, in a little um, small low power device like this radio. Let's see if we can get that in. I mean, one of the legs being a little bit of a pain here. One's going in no problem. The other one is uh, being a little bit awkward, but we'll... Because the hole should be cleaned out well enough. But let's have another... Another play with that. Just dress the legs up. If it won't go in again, I will just replace it with um, a new one. But what is it again? I don't think I've got any ten, uh, 470s at 10 volt. That's the only problem, and space is a little bit um, limited in this um, in this radio. Okay, that looks better. Let's give that in fact what we might have to do. That's just uh, I'll just give that a quick um, a quick clean out. bit of solder on that side that was preventing it. Let's give that another go now. There we are. No, it's still being awkward. Hmm. Right, just bear with us a second folks let me have a quick fiddle with this and I'll be back as soon as I've got the thing in right okay um, that's in I also I would say yeah I struggled for an hour to get that in but actually it was the usual case as soon as I switched the camera off it popped straight in there so anyway I've got the other capacitor and I have just quickly um, I grabbed my um, my ESI tester here 
um, and I just checked that and again as I suspected it's perfect there's absolutely nothing wrong with that capacitor so we might as well reuse it so hopefully this might go in a little bit easier than the uh, and the last one but let's see ah there we go straight in so we'll flip that over and oops and we'll flip it over and of course the legs drop out we'll flip that over just bend it ever so slightly and I'll just tack it if I can. In fact, where's my, uh, where's my bit of solder? There it is. We'll get a, get a tack on that side if I can. Come on. There we go. Right, that'll hold it for a second. Careful, make sure we don't um, twist that ribbon cable. That's one of the worst things with working on this radio is that uh, that damn ribbon cable there. So there's no way of disconnecting it, and I would hate to have to remake that if I broke it. Okay, solder that back in proper. There we are. I'll just add a little bit more just to tidy that side up like that. There we go. So that is that. Electrolytic there replace well reinstated like I said we haven't bothered actually putting a new one in because there was nothing wrong With that capacitor there was nothing wrong with that capacitor But we have cleaned all the um, electrolyte damage that came from those three up and those have been replaced with new um, Capacitors that one's been replaced with a new capacitor. That's what we did um, the first one we did so on this board basically what we've got left now is those two capacitors there and that capacitor in there and I can already see straight away there's a, a little IC there which I guess is an op amp or um, something similar it's a little um, 8 pin IC there and the legs on it do look rather furry. I can see a lot of damage in this uh, in this area um, from the electrolyte. So this is going to be fun. But basically, if we get these three done here, that's the bottom board pretty much sorted. So we can at least put that part that part of the radio back together, and I don't have to keep worrying about that damn ribbon cable there. Let me get you. Uh, get you zoomed out a bit so you can uh, see that's probably how where we'll leave it in this video actually is with that board um, recapped and then in the, the next video we'll put this back together um, we might even be able to try it at that point and um, see if we've made any improvements and then obviously we've got the top board that we're going to need to um, do as well so let's look at changing these three last capacitors So this is this uh, is quite a um, quite the job to do. Oh yeah, it's really bad. Yuck! So the smell is. In fact, I may have to um, I may have to call it and finish this what this off. In fact, I need some better extract. I think that's one of the main things. Yeah, the smell coming off this is really unbearable. Yep, got that in the wrong place. I'll have to get that off after. A bit of fresh get a bit of fresh solder basically to mix in with the old solder on the sides of the uh, component and then 
have to get that off with some solder wick, I think. We've got a little bit of excess um, solder there, we just need to remove. There we are. If we can get that off proper once we've got this damn um, capacitor out of the way. Let's try and try and rock that off now. We've got a little bit of fresh solder on each um, connection. bit but not much it's I thought I said I thought the corrosion was bad on the other side but uh, actually this see this actually looks worse and it would be where we've got all the wiring where we don't want to let me hold it with something a little bit more stable so what I don't want to do is risk twisting the capacitor off the board uh, before I've heated the leg Because we are, you know, we are in danger of pulling a pad if we do that, and we don't want to pull a pad. I mean, yes, we could repair it. It's it's not the end of the world if you pull a pad, but there should be, if you're careful enough, there should really be no reason to. Off you come. So this is what happens with the solder when um, there we go. It's up. This is what happens to the solder uh, when these um, capacitors leak. It stops really becoming solder, and it goes to like this. It's like a, it's almost like a crystalline kind of material, and um, heat doesn't seem to affect it. That's virtually off. Oh, that's hot as well. Might just be able to just rock. There we go, that's off. Let's lift that out of the way. And yeah, and like I said, the, the electrolyte damage around there is really, really nasty. It is suit. In fact, let me get you zoomed right in there because we might. Looking at how long this video has been um, filming now, we might actually make this a part one and we'll come back for a part two on this. Um, let me get you zoomed down so you can see quite how um, bad this is. How far can we go? Right there, that's pretty good. Right, if you can see here, you can see the... Um, you can see where I've taken the capacitor off there, ignore that, that's where I've um, got a bit of excess solder on it, we can easily get that off after. But you can see the muck that's come from that um, capacitor, you can see all the damage on, well not particularly damage, I think we'll be okay at cleaning it up. But if you look around this IC there, the electrolyte's got all around there. It's actually all around the other side of the IC underneath them wires, but we also have another capacitor right under there as well which we're also going to have to um, take out and replace um, it's horrible this it really is uh, I'm, I'm even slightly half tempted to get this desoldering station um, this is why I'm not rushing it why this like I said it's probably going to be a multi-parter um, I'm even slightly tempted although they are a pain to get out to actually disconnect. I know I said earlier in the video that I was I really didn't want to have to, but I might even disconnect that and disconnect that, take them completely out of the way just so I can get better access to this part of the circuit to um, 
to clean it up properly. We may even end up lifting the IC off, cleaning underneath it and putting it back on. We'll have to do a lot of continuity checks around here because there is really quite a lot of corrosion damage. Um, it's nasty. And it is one of the problems with these capacitors, these early um, surface mount electrolytic capacitors. That, yeah, they weren't stable over the years. Like I said, it's not just things like Sony products. You know, it's Commodore Amiga 600s, Commodore Amiga 1200s, Mac Classics. Uh, even I've even seen camcorders and things like that from the era, and they all suffer the same problem. And it's all with it, with these capacitors. So yeah, I'm. I'm actually going to leave it there for now for this video. I mean, you've seen um, the start of the work on this. You've seen what this is actually involved. I'm actually, do, as well, I'm doing this for the chap that I'm actually um, trying to repair this radio for so we can actually see kind of what's involved in actually sorting one of these radios out. Um, like I said, I've never worked on a radio like this before. I'm familiar with doing the capacitors, obviously, because I do work on a lot of... Um, late 80s and early 90s computer hardware which uses the same type of capacitors i'm familiar with the damage i'm you know familiar with actually sorting out the damage that it causes um i'm just not familiar with the actual electronics that much because i don't do that much with this type of radio you know the kind of radios that i work on either have valves or transistors in them um this is all integrated circuits digital tuners and things like that it's a little bit beyond me on that side of it but capacity a capacitor is a capacitor and a leaking capacitor is a leaking capacitor and the remedies you actually have to go through to sort that problem out are exactly the same so uh, that's why i'm rather tentative working on this but you know i am confident that i can at least sort this um, capacitor damage out Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed this um, little, um, like, it's, it's the part two. Because we did a part one where we actually had a quick look at the radio and tore it apart. And found, yeah, we did have capacitor leakage issues. And this is like a part two. Well, this is part two. This is the actual start of the um, repair work. So, uh, in the next video, we'll finish off cleaning all this area up here. We'll replace them um, three capacitors. Uh, we'll see whether we're going to have to disconnect these or not. Um, I'll have a think about that before I carry on with this. Because if I can get away with not having to disconnect all that, I'd rather do. But then are we going to be able to clean everything up? Are we going to be able to actually do the continuity checks and everything with all that in situ? Um, I do fortunately have all the service data for this radio on my laptop next to me here so at least we can check things out it does have some really good um, prints of the actual PCB and locations so we might be able to use that and do some continuity checks and just make sure everything is connected like so before we put those um, capacitors back on anyway so I'm going to leave it there for now I hope you enjoyed this little update in the project and I hope for the chap that I'm repairing this for you find this um, interesting actually seeing what's involved in actually getting this thing hopefully working again so I will say thanks for watching and goodbye